Hey folks, Rob from Frugal Radio here and today I'm just experimenting with a couple pieces of software I haven't used before. So we have a trunk recorder and then something called audio scanner. And I had the idea that uh, this audio scanner that makes a web interface could look pretty neat on the tablet. Um, the, it's a, a Panasonic Toughbook. Uh, so it's, it's a computer but it's kind of like a tablet because it's touch screen as well. And I wanted to see how uh, that would perform. So, uh, so yeah, let me show you. In, in the background you can see uh, Trunk Recorder is making a whole bunch of rec uh, recordings. That's on this screen here. So it's recording a bunch of different talk groups from my local P25 system, which is quite a large system. Um, and then it's actually this piece of software that you can see running in the bottom is, uh, is actually preparing that to provide this screen right here um, on a separate computer. So I was like, oh, I can install this in my vehicle, uh, kind of like in tablet mode, and, uh, and have access to the P25 system. This Panasonic Toughbook, I can put a data SIM card in, so that would enable me to access the P25 system just with the computer, regardless of where I was driving around, as long as I was in cell phone data coverage. So that was what I was thinking, and, uh, and this is me sort of experimenting with it. Let me show you a little closer. Okay, so this, uh, this is a PC running Dragonos Focal. You can see right now there's a bunch of encrypted talk groups, so it won't record those, uh, but it will record the clear talk groups, so you can see that actually happening. And, uh, and then down here we have um, a really cool system where I can switch talk groups on and off uh, using the touch screen interface here. So these are the different talk groups that are currently programmed up on the system. The ones at the bottom that you see right here, these are, uh, are just the buses that run in the city. And the buses do a lot of private calls with their dispatcher. So, uh, so I'm not really interested in those, I have those turned off. But I can group things by different names. So if I want to listen to the light rail transit system, I can just tap on LRT, the light goes green, and, uh, and that'll start putting through the LRT talk groups so that I can listen to it on the other page. So I'll turn those back off for now. Same with the buses, if I want to listen to the bus dispatch channels and operations channels. Uh, we got Edmonton Fire Rescue, we got the roadways, the waste department, we've got Stracona Fire coming through here, the uh, peace officer channels coming through. So, uh, so if I then just click on this back button, this is kind of like the live feed of whatever's going on. So uh, I think I had it on whole talk group mode. Right now it should be picking up on some of those other ones that are uh, showing on screen there. But I think pretty much 1949 and that, 1948, those are just training channels. So I generally have those locked out, but we could go on to uh, select talk group. We could go to training one and training two, and then the audio would start coming through like a scanner. Oh, there's another bus. Working six is an active fire that's going on right now. The audio probably doesn't sound too good just because it's uh, it's coming through a pair of tiny little speakers on the Panasonic right now. So like I say, mostly I leave the, uh, the training channels for the fire uh, switched off. So we would just go up here, find the training channels, e EFRS 1 and 2, disable those, and uh, go back. You'll see it now, it says avoid. And then this is kind of like a scanner display, so when a new Transmission comes in on a talk group I'm monitoring. It'll switch. So here we're seeing the talk group ID. We're seeing the frequency, the voice frequency that it's in use, the name that it's been given. Thank you very much. And I'm just experimenting with this right now. Of course, you can also hold on that talk group so you can continue monitoring any particular conversation that you want to, kind of like a hardware scanner. Um, so right now, this is running from this Linux computer, like I said, running Dragon on its focal. It's doing the hard work. This is just providing the display. But I really do like the fact that I can tap on that and uh, I can create different things, switch them on and off, different groups, as I want to listen or don't want to listen to those particular channels. Um, this is the old computer that's powering it right here. This is an old AMD A4, so it's not particularly good hardware. And the uh, receiver is, of course, a software-defined radio. 
it's this Air Spy Mini. Um, so I wanted to use the Air Spy Mini uh, basically because the Air Spy Mini covers uh, 6 megahertz of bandwidth. So with 6 megahertz of bandwidth I can cover all the voice channels on this large P25 single cast system. Uh, the other nice thing about using a software defined radio for the single cast system is that it uh, it has no problems decoding the single cast. Uh, up here you can see some of the other hardware that I use to monitor this system. So uh, so here you can see the current active channels on Unitrunker and, uh, and then that's the SDS that I use to, uh, to decode some of the channels as well. And uh, I also have a, a hardware radio there too that I use for the P25 system. So uh, so back to this, what's going on? We have Strathcona Fire Dispatch. Can hold that talk group. And, uh, and then I can clear it and just go back to regular scan anytime I want. Now, uh, I have discovered that this software, uh, for some reason on the server side, it does quit on me sometimes. So I'll just see this go back. Uh, I'll just see this stall on me and uh, it'll just go back to a regular terminal window. I'm not quite sure what the reason is for that, what's causing the crash. But uh, every once in a while it does that. And then it says no link here in the top. Um, so anyway, that's me using it with the Panasonic Toughboat. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool is you can use it with a phone as well. So for example, here's my phone. Um, I wonder if I can, uh, I can show you the display here. So this is me just using it in the browser of my phone and, uh, and I can do the same kind of things. I can select the talk groups that I want to monitor. You can see my IP address there. Um, and that's literally that's just in the standard browser on my Android phone. They do make an app for this as well, which could be quite interesting. So it would be uh, it would be interesting to see. It's actually showing an old time code on there. I notice probably because I haven't uh, updated it for a while. Maybe it wants to reconnect. So it's uh, it's not saying no link. So it's probably going to work. But uh, right now nothing's showing up. Uh, I think one thing that happens is just a little advert there saying you can get the app. The app is available for Android and for iOS. Uh, yeah, it just disappears there. But right now there's no, there's no unencrypted traffic that I'm monitoring. Can't remember what talk groups I have on this. I can maybe enable a few more. Uh, there will not be much going on with the emergency operations center today I don't think. Uh, but basically it turns my phone into a scanner, which is really cool. It's just a shame that there's not too much going on right now. Uh, I've got some of the bus calls that are happening, but I, uh, I have those disabled as you can see. I don't really want to monitor any of the individual bus conversations. So uh, yeah, just a little experiment today with, uh, with this software, RDO Scanner. And uh, like I say, using Trunk Recorder as the back end and then RDO scanner itself. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm playing with today. Let me know if you've used this software or something similar to it and how you've got on with it. Uh, it'd be good to know if people are, are making use of this. I just wanted to do an experiment to see if it was any good. It certainly has a great deal of potential. Whether or not I spent the time getting it all set up is anybody's guess. But uh, that's what I'm playing with today. So you can see some of what I'm playing with here uh, in the shack. Um, what are you using? Uh, what are you doing to stream some uh, P25 stuff? Or are you just using hardware scanners? Uh, are you running Unitrunker? Are you using DSD Plus? Let me know in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you and anyone who's uh, using this software and how you're getting along with it. Is yours crashing like mine does occasionally? Uh, how's it going? No, it's still recording right now, which is good. Uh, but yeah, let me know uh, the kind of software that you're using and, and uh, how you've been able to monitor P25 systems with software-defined radios. Stay safe out there. For now, this is Frugal Radio, out.